is up my fellow gamers in today's video we got our tier list for the global launch of heroes of crown legends like and so for more amazing gaming content yesterday we put out our best beginners guide and codes i'll have a link to that video down below in the comment section pin so check that out for all the newest codes so my tier list i'm gonna do them a little differently let me explain how this tier list is gonna go so for this one today, we are only going to be ranking the blue, the red, and the Ooh. green element characters, specifically the legendaries. So we're not messing with the lights or the darks because the lights and the darks, they're obviously stronger than the other like three main attributes or the three main factions. So we're gonna do another tier list separately where we're gonna rank just the lights and darks because ideally the lights and the darks are gonna be the characters that you're chasing after and they're going to be the best for like mid to end game. But early game as a new player, it's gonna be a bit tougher to get those lights and darks. So you're gonna have to kind of focus on some of these other characters at the beginning and then eventually you're gonna transition to those lights and darks. First one we're gonna do is all of the blues. We got the Daughter of the Sea. She's an okay healer and buffer, not amazing because there is better options. For me, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm putting her in the B. Now the way I have this ranked is double S, there's one specific character for double S, then we have S, A, B, C, and D. Now, all the characters that I put in the S you pretty much should be building out as a new player. They're like the best ones. You wanna keep those, max those ones out. The A ones aren't bad. They're ones that you can kind of experiment with and you can max them out, but eventually you're gonna to wanna to reset them and like rebirth them to get the materials back once you get better characters. But for like the Bs, the Cs, and the Ds, I would say the characters in those rankings use them for food. They're not like great. Next one we got is Shield of Partha. Now this one is actually a pretty decent warrior. She has some really good CC skills and also some very good survivability. She's one that you can build out early game. I'm putting her in the A. Next one is gonna be the Howling Wind. Mainly focuses on trying to freeze the enemies and take advantage of them being frozen. But there's definitely gonna be better options out there. So I'm putting her in the B. Next one we got is the Celestial spear via Vea. now this is pretty much one of the top tier characters that you want to look out for in fact this is the one that pretty much a lot of people are going to recommend you build out and have her does amazing aoe damage and also goes ahead and puts debuffs on the enemies like weakness crit damage reduction an absolute must for having and building out next one we got is going to be baby shark pearl this is a mage and she's also a debuffer as well she's one that i'm not quite putting in the s but i think she is a top tier a that she's worth building out next we got the might of partha this is an assassin she's okay in certain situations can be good if you need an assassin but there's going to be better assassins that you're going to come across I'm putting her in the B. She's kind of like an, an average character. Next one, the Arctic Empress. An okay warrior. Again, that's pretty much average. Nothing amazing that's going on with her. Another one that I'm putting in the B. Now this one, this is the Paladin Celestial Spear via Vea. This is pretty much the super duper charged up version of this Celestial Spear. And this is obviously gonna be our double S. This is who you're kind of building out towards. Next one we got is gonna be a bunch of C's and D's. These are ones you pretty much just wanna use as food because they're not that great. We have the C Witch. We're going ahead, we're putting her in the C. Really bad, putting him in the D. For the Frost Spirit, we have another C. Water Sage is gonna be in the D. Next one, another D, the Halberd of Exile. Finally rounding it up, the Wandering Knight. This is also gonna be another one that we are putting in the D. All right, moving on to our fire characters next. First one we got is gonna be the Eternal Flame, Julius. About an average mage, he has some decent immunity, a little bit of burn effects nothing crazy um then we got dragon princess she's gonna be another one who's about an average putting her in the b then we have a really good tank this is gonna be the blazing heart marlock what's really good about him is his ability right here he goes ahead and applies a shield to all your allies he goes ahead and gives everyone on your team a crit lifesteal effect this is what makes him an easy a tier for me next one we got is the mask ronin just another ranger damage dealer he's okay in certain situations but again better options next one we got is a really strong mage we got the scarlet velvet she goes ahead and also puts the burn effect on enemies but this right here is really really strong 
If the target is burning, each stack of burning deals extra damage based on a percentage of attack. And if it's more than four stacks, he's got a 60% chance to just go ahead and put a stun on them. A really awesome ability. Definitely one that you can invest in early game. Next one's gonna be Nightingale. We got a priest who does AOE and also focuses on burn. Nothing special going on here. Another average hero we're putting in the B. Then we got Flower Frenzy, who focuses on damage and again, burn effects. Another one putting her in the B, about average. Finally, rounding it off, we have our season Ds. This is gonna be Devil Devourer. He's a mage, way better options. Putting him in the C. Then we got the Axe Berserker. He was okay. He's like a C plus. Um, he, he's got some okay skills. Like I liked his ability for the armor shredding, but that's kind of all he's good for. So I'm putting him in the C. Then we got the Iron Fist, another warrior. She has lifesteal. For me, she's like a C still, someone that I would use as food. Then we got the Ancient Warlock, AOE and Burn. Then really that great, putting her in the D. And then we have the Molten Fury, really weak compared to a lot of the other characters. Also only has three skills easily putting them in the D. Final one for fire, we got the Wild Huntress. Another one only has three skills, really weak, easily a D. Final group we have is gonna be the green, the nature, whatever you wanna call them. First stone up we got is the Lord of Time, Merlin. Arguably, this is like the second best next to the Celestial Spear. So this is like your other main character that you also want to build out. Easily a top tier S, just an absolutely amazing healer and revival. Next one we got is going to be the Endless Storm, an okay mage. Again, that's about average, putting him in the B. Then we got a really good mage, specializes in AoE damage and bleed, and that's gonna be the Tempest Dragon. Going ahead, putting them in the A. Then we got the Rose Prince Wendy, an amazing assassin that specializes in bleed. In fact, if you're looking for an assassin, this is the one that I recommend. I know we had a few other assassins that I ranked kind of lower. This is the assassin that you want if you want an assassin on your team. Going ahead, putting her in the A. Then we got the Master Dragon. What I love about this character is the intervene ability that it has. Easily for me, another top tier, putting in the A. Next one we got is gonna be the Forest Guardian. Now I love the speed boost. This is a mage, easily a top tier character worth building out, putting them in the A. So we got is the Silly Fruit Bombs, specializes in DPS and crowd control abilities. This is about an average character, putting them in the B. Now we're moving on to some of the lower tier, weaker characters from the Green Forest Faction, Nature Faction, whatever you want to call it. We got the Night Owl. This is going to be a C. We got the Blades of Storm. This is going right in the D. Daughter of Nature, another one that's kind of weak. There's way better healers out there putting them in the D. Then we got the Lord of Artemis. I actually really like this character and I've been building this character out seven stars, I think, and they're really good for their execution combo ability. It's definitely someone that I'm not gonna use like long-term um, because there are gonna be way better characters. So I'm putting them in the B for me, like a high B, like a B plus. Next one's gonna be Savage Beast. This is easily a D. There's way better warriors out there. Then we got our Astral Guardian, only has three skills, putting them in the D. And then the final one's gonna be the Fruit Candy, another one, only three skills. There's way better assassins putting them in the D. So there it is, that is my personal tier list for the three main attributes, factions, elements, whatever you wanna call them, the legendary characters. As always, tier lists are opinionated, so this is my personal opinion. You may or may not agree with it. Tomorrow, we'll go ahead and we'll rank the lights and the dark characters. Stay happy, stay safe, I'll see y'all later, peace.